Islanders started their preseason in the best way possible. A 4-0 win over the New York Rangers. We'll break down all the key takeaways from the game and fill you in on everything happening about your New York Islanders on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know the Islanders did. Got off to a great start with the 4-0 win over the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. We will discuss what happened in that game, some of the key takeaways, some of the players who look good, and some of the players who maybe need a little bit of work. Keep in mind, yes, it is the first preseason game, so you can't get too worked up about what we see on the ice. This is about getting the players ready for the season, not even about wins and losses, trying to get to see which teams have good chemistry, which players have good chemistry together, what line combinations work, what don't. You know the Islanders are only going to use a certain number of their regular players, and they're going to take the rest of the early preseason games to look at some of the younger guys. So we'll break all of this down for you, Uh, but it's great to have hockey back. And uh, first Islander game, unofficially at least, since game seven of the conference finals in the playoffs last spring. So uh, that felt so good to see the Islanders on the ice again. If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a topic that you'd like us to talk about, feel free to send us an email. The email address lockedonislanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. And we'll keep you up to date on all the latest news, notes, and happenings. And First of all, thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen of the day. And it's always greatly appreciated that you have decided to become a member of the Locked On Islanders family. And we've got a lot of great content for you on today's show. Let's start with the game. Islanders winning four to nothing over the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Now, keep in mind, the Islanders not going to have a home game until the middle of November, no preseason home games in this preseason or exhibition season at the UBS Arena or at the Nassau Coliseum or at Barclay Center even. The home games will be played at Bridgeport. So if you want to see the Islanders in person uh, at a home game, you got to go to Bridgeport. There are games in New Jersey and, and at Madison Square Garden to catch them, but you know, that is not something you're going to be able to do regularly uh, here. The great thing about this game, uh, the 4 nothing win over the Rangers, and again, you know, a lot of the regulars not in the lineup. I mean, who was in the lineup among the regulars? Brock Nelson, Josh Bailey, Casey Zizekas, Cal Clutterbuck. Those are the forwards that were, you know, definite locks And then you had Ryan Pulak and Scotty Mayfield among the regular defensemen. And then, of course, you had Ilya Sorokin, who started the game. And to me, that was the best thing out there. Ilya Sorokin. 13 saves in the 13 shots he faced. Played a little more than half the game. 32 minutes, 44 seconds. But if you watch the game, Ilya Sorokin looked sharp. And again... Some of these Rangers players are not the guys you're going to see on the ice come puck drop mid-October when these games really start to count. So you always take preseason with a grain of salt. But to me, seeing what was being done by 
Ilya Sorokin, he anticipated well. He had good reflexes. It almost looked like he had just played a game a couple of days ago, and now he was out there playing again. You couldn't tell that this was his first appearance of the preseason. And look, the Islanders are going to need strong goaltending from both Ilya Sorokin and Simeon Varlamov. We know the Islanders' style of play, and goaltending really does matter. So seeing Ilya Sorokin out there looking comfortable, looking sharp, looking effective in all aspects of the game, to me, that was the biggest, most important takeaway. Now, Jakob Skarik came in, played you know, the final period and a half, 27 minutes and change. He made 15 saves. Look, we all know Skarik is starting the season in Bridgeport. And he's probably going to finish the season in Bridgeport. But you want to see a kid like him develop and improve. And I think we saw that from Skarik in this game. And to me, that was a very good sign. As far as the Islanders' play on the ice was concerned, uh, obviously, you know, the veterans, it was great to see some of the bottom six forwards contribute. And one of the things we saw was the chemistry between Casey Sezikis, who had a goal and an assist, and Cal Clutterbuck, who had a goal and two assists. Those guys played sharp hockey. They made their passes. You know, you're in the preseason. A lot of these guys who you're out there with are players you're not so familiar with. You don't play with them all the time. You may not even be playing with them all the time in in training camp. So, you know, chemistry is not always there. And that's why players like Sezikis and Clutterbuck, who have been playing together for years, uh, you know, they really had an advantage. And the best part is that they did take advantage of it, and it resulted in some plays. The, The power play... Yeah, it struggled at times, and they had their chances. The Islanders did. Uh, Brock Nelson, his first goal, I love that play. Bailey made a really nice pass, and then Brock Nelson backhanding it from right in the crease area. That's the kind of thing you really want to see. Uh, Nelson going to the net, Bailey with the nice play. Uh, you give Rat, uh, Richard Panique, uh, you know, an assist also. Overall, that was just a nice, pretty goal. Uh, And then the second goal, the Sezikis goal, which was a power play goal, great give and go with Clutterbuck. And I was very, very happy to see that. Among the the defensemen, uh, you know, Robin Sallow, I thought he looked good at times, played a little over 19 minutes. Uh, Gustafson, who also uh, was out there, he's fighting for a job. I think he looked good. But, you know, to me, seeing guys like Sallow and Grant Hutton have strong games, that was encouraging. Again, Sallow fighting for a roster spot. He's got an outside chance of sticking. but, But even if he doesn't, and it's very likely he won't, the important thing is seeing him make progress so that if injuries hit or if he pl- it continues to play well in Bridgeport, you got to play him. So, you know, let Robin Sallow show you what he can do and make an impression on the coaching staff. That in the long haul is important. We've got more takeaways from this opening game between the Islanders and the Rangers, plus our Islanders birthday of the day, a member of some Stanley Cup teams and an early Islander who really was tough, ready, and overlooked as a skilled hockey player in some ways as well. So make sure you stay with us that more to come on the locked on Islanders podcast. Does this sound familiar to you? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live another that lets you stream your favorite shows and you're watching sports highlights on your phone. And yeah, you've got your neighbor's best friends login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle, and it's a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports 
movies and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever, and the best thing, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. So some more takeaways from this opening exhibition game, and, and it is an exhibition game. Uh, obviously, we mentioned the goaltending. The penalty kill was solid. And here's a great stat from this game. Three different Islander defenders blocked at least two shots. Ryan Pulak, Thomas Hickey, Grant Hutton. Scotty Mayfield added one. But, you know, you see these players being willing to make those sacrifices early on. And I like seeing that. Kiefer Bellows was out there. He had three shots on goal in this game, which was the most of any Islander forward. Uh, he also had three hits. Now, again, Kiefer Bellows is a long shot to make this team. But if he can do it, again, make that impression. Maybe he's trade bait. Maybe the Islanders can get something for him. Maybe he starts the season in Bridgeport, but plays well enough to earn some playing time. Maybe he becomes the first call-up. If somebody gets hurt, you want to see more from Kiefer Bellows, and we did. Uh, Atu Rate out there uh, and didn't look out of place. And look, he did not register a shot on goal, won only two out of his five face-offs, did have two hits. But here's what I liked about Rate's game. As I mentioned, definitely was not out of place definitely looked like he wasn't intimidated being going up against, you know, some NHL opponents, some AHL opponents. Uh, he's going to go back to Europe this year, almost certainly. But again, make that impression, get the experience that you need and grow your game. I think this kid looks great. Uh, you know, is he ready for the NHL yet? No. Absolutely not. But it was encouraging to see where he's at and that I think he definitely has a future in this league. And that's all you could ask for, for, you know, this year's second round pick playing in his very first NHL game. Another thing I loved from this game, Ross Johnston, one goal, one assist, a plus two out on the ice for 12 minutes and 22 seconds. Now, look, we know Ross Johnston can play in this league. We also know there really probably isn't a big role for him this year on this team just because of the depth that this team has put together. And to me, seeing Ross the boss out there doing his thing, three hits, getting a regular shift because, again, it's a preseason game. You could afford to put Ross Johnston out there to skate as much as you want, but he responded to the opportunity, and that's all you could ask for. And believe me, before this season is over, depending on the opponent, the injuries, the situation, we will see Ross Johnston on the ice for the New York Islanders. We will. We absolutely will. And wait to see him. Uh, you know, have a strong first game after everything is said and done. So very happy to see that. Simon Holmstrom also out there. Yeah, you know, not a not not a heck of a lot from him. Uh, uh, you know, no no shots on no shots on goal, no hits. Uh, only twelve minutes, nineteen seconds out there on the ice. So. Overall, not as encouraging performance. One other thing, uh, we had a game misconduct and a boarding call uh, against Berkeley Goodrow of the Rangers and Islanders. That was a little bit of a scary moment, blood drawn on a play, but at least everybody's okay and the Islanders end up 
you know, getting an opportunity. Now you didn't like later on the uh, pet that the Islanders took during that power play that, you know, nullified part of it. And that was, uh, you know, you had a five on three, couldn't cash it in. You get the too many men on the ice penalty. And all of a sudden, you know, the five on three becomes a four on three. So that was, uh, you know, a little frustrating. And again, the power play, which we saw all last year, all throughout the off season, the power play still inconsistent. They got a power play goal. That's encouraging. Yes. But play just looked lost. And you can't afford to have that kind of situation where they're not setting up in the zone, not moving without the puck. Uh, they are going to miss Nick Letty on this power play. And, you know, there wasn't really, Robin Lowe sort of had to play that role of being the quarterback of the power play based on the, the lineup today. Mixed results. But again, you get him out there. You get him out there. You have Ryan Pulak out there for his shot. This is, again, you're trying different players out. And yeah, the result on the power play was very uneven. Wasn't encouraging at times, but you got a power play goal. And now it's time to sort of regroup and, you know, try other people. The next preseason game is coming up in a couple of days. And then try out some different people and can get more things going. And I'll tell you, on tomorrow's show, one of the things we're going to focus on is how are the Islanders going to replace the loss of Nick Letty, particularly on the power play? And I got one, one player in mind who out tomorrow, who I think is going to be a really big asset for the Islanders on the power play and who, if he does well, this team will improve on the power play. If he struggles this year on the power play, there be any improvement. And the Islanders need to see some improvement from the power play to take them in to the next level this coming season. So, uh, you know, that's a crucial factor. And we'll talk about that on tomorrow's show. When we come back, we have our Islanders birthday of the day, an early Islander of the seventies and early eighties. He won a cup with the team and he was a very popular Islander, uh, throughout his career. So we have that and a lot more still to come on today's locked on Islanders podcast. Do you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There really is something for everyone. And when you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're always passionate about their favorites. And it's easy to tell why. Listen to this lineup of flavors. Cookies and cream, cherry barcia, mint brownie, coconut, strawberry, German chocolate, and my personal favorite, salted caramel. I mean, when you combine sweet and salty, I'm there. And that was really, really good. If you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box and they'll send you two of each of the nine flavors so you can figure out which ones you like the best. And not only are Built Bars the best tasting protein bar, but they're healthy too. Check out the macros here. Each bar has 17 to 18 grams of protein. Each bar has between 130 and 180 calories, just four or five grams of sugar and only four or five grams of net carbs. All amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And Built Bar is the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And uh, this was a guy who I really liked watching back in the day. And he was drafted by the Islanders in the 10th round of their very famous draft back in 1972. Now, only played eight games for the Islanders in that first very difficult season of 72-73. Spent most of that season with the New Haven Nighthawks. But by the following 
following season when Arbor arrived on Long Island, Gary Howitt became a regular part of the New York Islanders. And Monday, yesterday, was 69th birthday. Um, native of Glendon, Alberta, and he was with the Islanders from 72-73 all the way through the 80-81 season. So Gary Howitt won two Stanley Cups with the Islanders, had one 20-goal season back in 1975-76. Uh, after 80-81, uh, he was traded to the Whalers, then played for the Devils for a couple of years, ending his NHL career in 1983-84. And how it was a tough guy. His first full Minutes. His career high came uh, with the Islanders anyway, came in 1916 season with the Islanders. So he did have some ability. And the amazing he never was afraid to drop the gloves. Five foot nine, just 170 pounds. That is a small build for a hockey enforcer. And yet he did it. And he did it effectively, usually a plus player on the plus minus, a tenacious checker. So always uh, encouraging to see Gary Howitt out there. You knew he was going to protect his teammates, dig for pucks, and get things done. We're going to look at one of his better games with the Islanders, March 16th, 1977 at the Chicago Stadium, former home of the Chicago Blackhawks. Islanders taking on the Blackhawks. Billy Smith, the goalie for the Isles, and the recently deceased Hall of Famer Tony Esposito in goal for Chicago. And it was the Islanders getting on the board first. Gary Howitt breaking the ice just 527 into the game, his 11th from Jean Potvin and line mate Andre St. Laurent, one to nothing Islanders. Then Bob Murray of Chicago headed off for tripping Clark Gillies cashed in on the power play. His 31st assist to Billy Harris and Dennis Potvin at 829. 2-0 Islanders midway through the first. And late in the first period, Jude Druan, his 20th from J.P. Parise. That's Zach Parise's dad and Ed Westfall. Time of the goal, 1817. Islanders 3, Blackhawks nothing after one period. Stayed that way in the second period. No scoring. But in the third, the Islanders pick it back up. Gary Howitt, his 12th from Dave Lewis and Jean Potvin at 1034. And then the Islanders go on the power play. Randy Holt of Chicago off for tripping. It took only four seconds. Andre St. Laurent won the draw, gets it to Gary Howitt. He, the puck in the net, and completes the hat trick. His 13th, St. Laurent, the only assist, Gary Howitt. Three goals on three shots on goal. He was a plus two. And he gets, of course, the game winner for scoring the first goal in the shutout. So Gary Howitt with the hat trick for the Islanders. And as far as Smith was concerned, 28 saves to earn the shutout. Islanders outshot 28 to 24 in this game. And amazingly, the Islanders' shots in this game balanced. No one had more than three, but Howitt had three. Dennis Potvin had three. Brian Trottier had three. And the Islanders end up with a 5 nothing win. The hat trick for our Islanders' birthday of the day, Harry Howitt. We wish him all the best. Uh, 69 Hold on. It's Harry Howitt for Islanders' birthday day. So, so uh, tomorrow, we will talk about the, to the Islanders power play and make sure you join us for that. We'll also take a look ahead at the second preseason game and and really take a look at how the Islanders are looking in camp and in preseason. It's great to have hockey back. Betting on the Islanders doesn't have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast, it's hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag wherever you get podcasts. 
That's going to do it for us today. Great to have Islanders hockey back. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great day. And of course, let's go Islanders.